My name is Greg Huntington. I was one of the original Jaguars. I was given the nickname the Mangler. I really have an interesting story on in how I came to JOI. Uh, concerning my hip resurfacing surgery. I had two dreams growing up in life. Uh, I wanted to play football at Penn State and I wanted to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. I was fortunate to play at Penn State from 88 to 92, three year starter on the offensive line, guard, center and tackle. And then I was drafted into the NFL by the Washington Red Redskins, fifth round. Played with the Redskins. I came here, uh, like I said, as one of the original Jaguars, played here in 95, 96 and 97. Um, and then I finished with the Bears. And then I had a short stint with the Steelers in 2000, which was a fulfillment of a dream. But prior to signing with them, they did all these x-rays and they had a, a picture of my lower lumbar and the orthopedic surgeon says, you have some genetic hip deformity, you're gonna need hip replacements when you get older. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, but fast forward 20 years later, um, that coupled with 21 years of football, uh, heavy weightlifting, I got to a point where the pain in my hip was so bad that I couldn't take two steps forward without being in pain. So I met with actually the team physician for the Jaguars, Kevin Kaplan, and tried all different things, PRP, and um, none of that worked for me. So he introduced me to Dr. Freiburg, um, and who does the Birmingham hip resurfacing, which I was already aware of. A good friend of mine works for Smith and & Nephew um, and knew about the, the Birmingham hip uh, resurfacing as compared to doing a total hip. So I got to meet with uh, Dr. Freiburg and then the rest is history. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I enjoyed meeting, meeting Greg. He was my first um, uh, previous professional athlete. I remember the old Jaguars. Uh, I was a huge fan. I remember being, my dad and I being part of the Florida Times Union uh, contest to see who could name the team back in 94 and 95. And, no, so, so it's really kind of neat meeting somebody that was a, a part of that, that, that team and field. And, and I can only imagine what 21 years plus of, of football could do to people's joints. And, you know, now uh, seeing Greg in the office beforehand, it was, it was amazing. It was humbling. It could, could see somebody so large of a frame and so agile yet be so hampered by your hip. Uh, uh, it, it, it bothered me that the only option up to that point for maybe some of your colleagues were, were having a total hip. And when I was younger and going through this, a total hip meant you were old. Yeah, that's all you could do is you get a total hip and, and a picture, you know, old man and, a, and an old lady sitting by the sitting by the lake fishing or something. But somebody that still wants to be active, it was, it was a great alternative. And this was kind of the chance to prove it. You still, you still are pretty active, right? I am uh, very much so. I mean, I got three um, young, beautiful girls and they keep me active. Um, I do play golf um, and I enjoy still uh, lifting weights and exercising. Um, you know, but what I so appreciate about you um, when I first met you, um, you have phenomenal bedside manners, which I think is so important for physicians today because of the advent of the internet. Everybody does their research, right? Good, bad, or indifferent, whether it's good information or bad information. I remember I came in, I had a list of questions. I said, then listen, I have a list of questions. He goes, ask them, ask all of them, which I did. And then you said, is that, do you have any more questions? Um, so you really, and then two, another thing, you, you mentioned the total hip. Uh, you said, look, Greg, it, it, it would be an easier procedure for me. You probably get paid more, but that's not what you need because you still have very good bone structure in your femur and your femoral head. So the Birmingham hip resurfacing is really what you need. And so I so appreciated your honesty in that and doing what's best for the patient, not just counting them as a number, uh, as another number. Yeah. I I, I think that's a, that's a, an important quality to have. And, and my dad was a physician and his bedside manner, not, not, not so great in a different field. Mm -hmm. I always thought if I were in that position and if I were in your position and someone told me I had to, or I needed surgery or surgery was, you know, how, how would I want them to react? And so you know, that's, uh, I appreciate you noticing things like that, but uh, it's important. Surgery is, is not the easiest thing in the world. And then, Hip resurfacing, of course, none of us will ever say you have to have surgery. You, this is it. You have to do it. We're orthopedists, not not you know brain surgeons or general surgeons. But the ability to to have something besides a total hip, whether it be harder or not, and knowing that you'd recover great from it, be able to go back to 
you're golfing, riding bikes, walking, walking on the beach, running, whatever you wanted to do before the, the needing a total hip, if you ever do, I think that's a, it's a win-win for all. Um, and I, you know, seeing you go through this has really, you know, reinvigorated my, my want to have people do really well after this, after this surgery. And I feel like it's an onslaught of people after you, given your social media input, have come in and talked to you and seen how well you've done and you know are doing well themselves now so so i want you to set the record straight in my surgery when you came out and to talk to my wife and say everything is going you said you never had to cut through so much muscle before you definitely do that we knew going in you know how stiff your hip was and how how strong of a person you were i've never seen anything like like yours and when i see that as far as the muscles go, I'm like, okay, he's going to be real sore afterwards. Mm -hmm. However, I know you're going to recover quickly from it. Muscles bring a lot of uh, a lot of good healing, like uh, enzymes and, and whatnot, to the to the surgery. And it's not cutting through muscles; it's just moving everything out of the way. Right. And that, that that was hard to look at, but hard to do. We we're sweating afterwards, but it was well worth it. Well, good. You gained experience from. <laughs> my situation that maybe you can apply going forward. Absolutely, and I heard you recently saw the videos taken. I did, I did. And I, I mean, it's fascinating um, to see what can be done to the human body. Um, and then, you know, when you when you were shaving down the, the femoral head and, you know, getting it ready for the cobalt cap, I mean, it was almost like a work of art when you saw that. It's amazing. Did it make you queasy at all? A little bit. <laughs> I said, that's enough. So, you know, I retired from the NFL in 2000. Um, and so for about two decades, I had pain on and off. Sometimes it was sharp, but it would always go away. Um, but as of probably 2020, the pain was consistent and constant. And I couldn't, you know, like I said, I couldn't even take two, two or three steps going forward uh, without being in pain. And I'm not one of those individuals, like most men, they're, they're afraid to go to doctors. I'm just the opposite. If I know I got an issue, I'm gonna take care of it. And so, like I said, I first uh, sought out um, Kevin Kaplan, who's a JOI physician, great guy. And he put me in touch with Dr. Freiberg and the rest is history. It didn't take long, no, right? Did not, did not. Um, I can't remember the turnaround, probably about four weeks-ish before getting you in. Yeah, you did a good job. You got me in at the beginning of the year, and now it's been roughly, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm working on six months, and every month that goes by, I, I see marketable improvement. How was your golf uh, tournament last week? So I played twice, and um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's still a little stiff, you know, in, in, the, in the rotation. Uh, but the great thing is that the one thing that I did for exercise, I was never really a runner, but I would walk a mile and a half, three or four times a week um, at a good clip. And I wasn't able to do that, obviously going into the surgery. And then I think it was probably three weeks after the surgery that we went to Disney World. And so yeah, it's a lot of walking there. But as you already alluded to, having to go through that uh, that amount of muscle and it forming back together and, and, and um, getting stamina back into it just took time so when i would exercise i may have to stop at a mile give it a little rest and then you know finish out but now i can do a mile and a half without stopping and like i said every month that goes by it gets better and better best decision i've made i love hearing that i love it I, and as i tell people too it's not gonna make you a runner if you're never a runner it's not gonna all of a sudden make you do it but it it, uh, it allows you the ability to get back to the sport or activity that you love to do uh, i'm sorry about your golf game but you should have spent a little bit of time on that short game while you're true I, that, that is true i can putt there's no excuse in the putting if there's people out there that are starting to have uh hip pain you know i would suggest do everything you can up to the point where you think you need to have surgery, like I did. I did steroid injections to try to reduce the pain. I tried PRP, um, but it's rotational joint, so none of that, yeah, it wasn't physical therapy correct. Um, but I got to a point where it, nothing was working, and it was in pain pretty much consistently. So I knew it was time that I, that I needed to have the surgery. I think there's good, good points made there. It, you never want to rush in, into surgery and trying other things is, is so important. 
you know, physical therapy, I tell people yoga. If you can't, you know, if you absolutely can't do it, then there are simple stretches to do anything to reduce that inflammation because post-operatively you want to think this was it, this, I had to do this. And it's your mindset going forward. And, and that's, you know, your drive. It was, it was impressive watching you recover. Um, and you're also the perfect candidate. You're, you're a male, you have great bone structure, you have great muscles, and you want to be active. Whether or not you were active 20 years ago, but, but you, you still want to be active. And I, I think that it's worth the extra time, or it's worth the extra effort uh, to watch you come through it like this. It's, it's impressive. Yeah, I mean, obviously I think so highly of the procedure and you, um, you know, I did a post on Facebook and I've gotten a lot of, a lot of responses and guys are calling me and asking me about my experience and I have nothing but good things to say and I can help them go in with, uh, with, with eyes wide open and be completely educated on the procedure. And you sent me a bill for that. I mean, that was impressive. I, I, I didn't know I had so many, <laughs> I didn't know I had so many Facebook like friends. I, you just, you, you really don't well for, so I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When something goes right and it's done right, why wouldn't you be a voice piece for it?